Well, thank you for joining us again in our session of praying through the Psalms. And if you would find Psalm 66, and before we read Psalm 66, let me just share this with you kind of as a, not only as a teaser, but a, a kind of a forewarning. In this Psalm, I found what I believe, in my, in my own life at least, was one of the most liberating principles and yet one of the most painful principles. Same one. Same truth that liberates is also the most painful. One of the most painful principles I've ever come across in the scripture. But then we want that liberty, don't we? We want that freedom. We want that benefit. Now there's so much in this psalm. And uh, we're going to divide the, the psalm up by four words. And here's the four words. And then Lorraine will read the psalm and I'll show you where these breakdowns are uh, after we sing. But the first word is awesome. We're going to look at something awesome in this psalm. And then we're going to look at the word afflicted. There's a lot in this psalm about affliction. And then we're going to look at abundance, because there's a great promise of abundance in this psalm. And then we'll look at the word answered. It talks about how God answers. All right, so we got a lot in this psalm. Lorraine, would you read this psalm straight through? It's 20 verses. Read along there at home, and then we'll sing and jump right into this. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing towards the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard, who keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt sacrifices of fat animals. With the sweet aroma of rams, I will offer bulls with goats. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. Well, thank you. Well, let's just turn our hearts to the Lord in, in song. Worship the Lord, and then we'll get right into this song together. See what God has done. See what God has done. For every daughter and every He says a couple times here how awesome God is. Verse 3, say to God, how awesome are your works. Uh, through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. He says, God, we're, we're to say to God, God, you're awesome. Have you said that lately? God, you're awesome. And then verse 5, come and see the works of God. He is awesome 
and he's doing toward the sons of men. And he talks about the great deliverance he brought to Israel and the parting of the Red Sea. So notice he says, say to God, God, you're awesome. But then he also says, tell other people, God is awesome. So you know what? I'm going to give you some homework. I want you to think about something that God has done in your life that is awesome. And then someone that you should tell it to. All right, there's your homework. you got to think of something that God has done in your life that is awesome. And then someone that you should tell it to. And then tell it to them. So say unto God, you're awesome. Your works are awesome. But then we also say it to others. Come and see the works of God. He's awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. In other words, hey, I want to tell you something. Come and see the works of God. Lauren, you had a testimony you were remembering this morning. Well, I think one of the most awesome phone calls I got was many years ago. After my father passed away several years, my mom started dating a man named Weldon, who was a godly Lutheran man who loved Jesus with all his heart. But this baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues thing was kind of new to him. He wasn't really sure about it. So once we were going to Brazil to um, do some meetings there, and I chose to speak on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But once I had my notes together, I sent them over to my mom to read. That was the night before we were leaving. Well, not be, unbeknownst to me, she sent them to Weldon. And Weldon read them, and he read them. At 11 o'clock, he read them. At 11.30, at 12, at 1, at 1.30. Well, at 3 a.m., of course, we were up getting ready to go to the airport. I get a phone call, and it was Weldon. I thought, what does Weldon want at 3 in the morning when he knows I'm going to Brazil? I answer the phone. He goes, I got it. I got it. And he was shouting. He thought it was the most awesome thing ever. And I did too. And I got to take that testimony to Brazil with me. That he read and he went into the word and he went into prayer. And God gloriously baptized him in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with his uh, language and tongues and he was just there all night reading that and when he began to pray it was a gush and it was awesome it was awesome they tell you it was awesome I know you told me it was awesome it was so awesome it was the best phone call ever if you remember I was there too oh, oh that's so I, I know how awesome it was <laughs> yeah. and I'll tell you she's excited at three in the morning it yeah. has to be awesome yeah, I'm not for her to be excited at three in the morning it, it has to be awesome, awesome. But here's a Lutheran man who wasn't yeah. taught these things, no. and, and he loved God, and he wanted more of God. He was yeah. actually like proofreading and reading, not proofreading, but reading the notes that you sent your mom. Over and over again. And, and the Spirit of God just filled him as he was reading. That's awesome. That was awesome. Now, you at home, you have your homework. It was awesome. you got to think of something awesome that God did for you, yes. and then share it with somebody else. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Well, let's look at verses 8, and we're going to go through verse 12. Uh, actually, we're going to go 10 through 12. 10 through 12. The first section of this song we called Awesome, for obvious reasons. God, you're awesome. And come and see the awesome things that God has done. But now we talk about the second word, and it's the word affliction. It's the word affliction. The same God who's awesome also at times afflicts us. And that makes us very uncomfortable. Whoa, what do you mean God afflicts us? Well, look at verses 10 through 12. He says, God, you didn't allow our foot to be moved. He talks about being tested. But he says in verse 10, For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to rule over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to an abundant place. Who did all that? God did all that. I, I remember when one of my children was going through a really, really hard time where they had entrusted themselves and given themselves unto others and they felt terribly betrayed, terribly betrayed. And uh, it was going to hurt them financially. It had hurt them deeply emotionally. Um, it, was, it was hurting relationships. They felt terribly dis betrayed. And it's really hard when, when your children are going through something. I mean, what can you do when it's your children and yet you want to encourage and you want to pray? And uh, they, they wanted to talk to me and I went to see them. And I knew on the way I had a very uncomfortable word to give them. I wanted to be a comfort, but I knew 
I had a very a cover word, and it was from this passage. I had read a book by Gene Edwards called uh, Healing for Christians Who've Been Crucified by Christians. And it's a powerful book. But in this book, they asked Jesus the, quest, the question, who crucified you? And Jesus would not have said, the Romans or the religious leaders. No, Jesus would have said, my father. Who orchestrated this all? Who foreordained it all? Who set it all up? Who prophesied it and then brought it to pass? His father. And my advice to the, the, the children that I was going to be, you know, trying to encourage was real simple. I said, you must consider this a crucifixion. Because if you will consider it a crucifixion, you can then look for resurrection. Because when God crucifies something, he then will resurrect. And notice what David said, for you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You caused men to ride over our heads. What does that phrase mean? mean you caused men to ride over our heads. Here's exactly what it means. God, you orchestrated these people hurting me. Wow, that's a tough word, isn't it? But here's what it means. It means your issue is not with those people. Your issue is with God. Those people were just instruments. God was just using them. You need to forgive them. Maybe they did mean it for evil, but you need to forgive them. But our issue is with God. And if you'll go to God and say, God, you caused men to ride over my head. God, you brought me into the net. God, you laid crushing burden upon me. God, you did this. Ah, oh, but look what else you can say. God, you tested me. Look what else you can say. God, you brought me forth. You brought me out. In this book, Gene Edwards says this. When you get to the place where you can acknowledge that it was God who did it, then it's a crucifixion. If you're not acknowledging that God did it, it's just another mistreatment. It's just another one of innumerable injustices that are done in this world. But if you'll see the hand of God in it, what do you think Joseph felt when his brothers betrayed him and threw him in a pit and sold him as a slave and counted him as dead? They did mean it for evil. But later on, you know what he said? He said, God sent me here. It was really God orchestrating it. Can you look beyond the people and see the hand of God? If, if you can, then as painful as that is, you're about to get liberated. Because it's God who's testing you. It's God who did it. And it's God who loves you. And it's God who has a purpose. And it's God who will fulfill that purpose. So if you're struggling with someone who's betrayed you, forgive them. If you're struggling under a crushing burden, look to the Lord. He's testing you. Notice verse 10. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver. Notice, God, you're getting all the dross out of our life through this. You're doing something through this. You, Lord, brought us into the dead. You, Lord, put a crushing burden on us. You, Lord, have caused men to ride over us. You did it, God. Just like Jesus submitted himself to what the Father was doing. And look what came out of that. Resurrection. Salvation. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Look what came out of that. So right now I want you to just pray. It's a hard prayer. I want you to pray a hard prayer. Will you say, Lord, help me to see your hand in what I'm going through. Lord, will you help me right now to see your hand in what I'm going through. And Lord, let me submit to crucifixion so that I can anticipate resurrection. I'm not going to keep my eyes on the crucifixion. I'm going to be looking for resurrection. So let me lead this in prayer right now for those that maybe they feel like they're caught in a net or they're, a crushing burden is upon them or men are betraying them, riding over their heads. But we don't want to be just mistreatment. We want the Lord to use it in that crucifixion resurrection process that brings us more into the image of Christ and actually liberates us. Once you're resurrected, man, you're free. You're free. I want you to really meditate upon these words this week. Some of you are going through this. This is a real song. Lord, lead us in prayer for those that are afflicted. Thank you, Lord God. 
Lord, as we go through the classroom of life, and you allow things into our life, Father God, and you are teaching us and growing us and moving in us, Father, may we not become bitter and angry and fight our own battles, but may we look to you, that you are crucifying us, that we might be resurrected and be more like you, Father, that you are preparing us for our home in heaven, Lord God, that as we are trained in the classroom of life, Father God, that we see that everything, we give everything to you, Lord God, and that you resurrect everything as we look to you, Father, and you make things better. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Work in those hearts, work in those lives, work in those minds. Do your healing work as we look to you, Father, for that resurrection time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to lead us. I'm going to lead us in prayer over these three points that are found in verse 11 and 12. So right now, just just begin to pray with me. Lord, you brought us into the net. This speaks of circumstances. Lord, you are greater than any circumstance. Lord, you knew what would have happened with the economy. You knew what would happen with the business. So, Lord, we, we pray to you today, acknowledging that you are greater than circumstances. You brought us into the net, and you're going to refine us because of it. You're going to bring us out like silver and gold. So the net, circumstances. And then these crushing burdens that we feel coming down on us. It says, Lord, you put these crushing burdens on us. But Jesus, you also said you would be with us under those burdens. You would help us carry those burdens by getting under the burden with us. So right now, just pray, Lord, let me feel you. Let me feel you with me in this burden. Let me feel you with me. Actually, Lord, taking the weight upon your shoulders and just walking beside me. Let me know that you are with me under this burden. And I thank you for that. And Lord, if you have caused men to ride over our heads, help me to forgive them. Right now, will you just pray that, Lord, help me to forgive the instruments that you've been using to refine me. Help me to forgive them. And Lord, help me to look for resurrection. Help me to look for resurrection. Hallelujah. We all get excited about resurrection, and that's what follows crucifixion. Nicole, lead us in that song one more time, and then we're going to look at abundance. We've got the word abundance in here. Amen. God has done. See what God has done. For every daughter and every son. Oh, oh. Hear what God has Why are you why are you causing me to go to the net? Why are you causing men to ride over my head? Why, Lord? And I believe the Lord would say, because you asked me to use you. And and his anointing oil will only flow out of broken vessels. Just the way of God. And when I had to help my children who were going through that time of betrayal, I knew. I prayed months, even years before, oh God, I know you're gonna have to break them. I know. It's the way it's the way it is. Because they want to be used by you, which means brokenness. And yet, what happens after the brokenness? Notice he says, you have refined us, verse 10, tested us, and refined us, verse 10. You brought us into the net, verse 11. You laid affliction on our backs, verse 11. You caused men to ride over our heads, verse 12. We went through fire, through water, but look at this last phrase. 
you, but you brought us out into a place of abundance. When God brings you out of the trial, and when he brings you into that place of abundance, you know what you're going to say? God, you're awesome. awesome. <laughs> God, you're awesome. When you're in the trial, you don't feel that. You don't feel he's awesome. But when he brings you out into an abundant place. I mean, do you think people felt that, that, that God was awesome when they met Jesus resurrected from the dead? I mean, do you think when, when Jesus came into that room that was locked and he breathed on them and he, and he said, peace unto you, receive ye my spirit. And he showed him his hands and his feet and he showed him that he was alive. After the trial, after the darkest night of their, their life, do you think they thought he was awesome? Yes, awesome. Now they didn't speak English, but if they spoke English, they would have said, you're awesome. <laughs> and they would have said, come and I'll tell you the awesome things that God has done. The reason you're going through a trial is so that you can have more abundance later. The reason you're going through the affliction is so that he can be more magnified, glorified in your life later. So that you can have a deeper, richer anointing on your life later. And notice, yes, God, you did all these things, but don't forget the end. But you brought us out into a place of abundance. Hallelujah. You brought us out into a place of abundance. Because, God, you're awesome. So let's just thank you for that right now. Lord, thank you. You're going to bring your children into a place of abundance. Yes. This trial won't last forever. This affliction won't last forever. You're going to bring them out into a place of abundance. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're awesome. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, I got one more place we've got to take in, and we're going to sing again. Remember, awesome, afflicted, abundance. Hey, they all start with A. They all start with A. <laughs> and you're from Canada, eh? A. Hey. They all start with A. <laughs> And now I want you to see, this is one of the most misunderstood passages. I, I want you to, under, to, to see answered. Look at verse 16. He says, come and hear all you who fear God. I will declare what he's done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth. That's prayer. And he, ex, he was extolled with my tongue. That's praise. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. I don't know how many times I've heard that quoted. Well, you didn't get your answer because there's sin in your heart. Well, they don't read far enough. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. Hey, when you feel like he's not answering, you keep praying. You keep crying out to him. And just let him cleanse your heart through the trials, through the tests. First John 3 says... If our heart doesn't condemn us, then we have confidence toward God. But even if our heart does condemn us, God is greater than our heart. In other words, God can deal with it. So we can have answered prayer. So bring your heart to the Lord today. Say, Lord, I don't want anything in my heart that would be of knowledge against uh, your answering my prayer. I don't want to regard any iniquity in my heart. I just want you to cleanse me through these trials. And bring me into that place of abundance. Lord, I cried unto you and you answered me. If I was hanging on to iniquity, you wouldn't have, but I let go. The word regard means you know about it and you choose to keep it anyway. So when you're in that refining fire and he, he puts his finger on you and says, You know what, you, there's part of you needs to die right here. This part of your flesh, old life. I, I put you through this test. I let those people do that to you to expose this. And I want you to let go of it. And as you let go of it, he'll bring you into a greater place of abundance. Oh, hallelujah. You'll have a greater flow of the anointing in your life. God uses the broken. So if you pray, Lord, use me, then he says, I will. So let me break you. And then I'm going to take you into a place of abundance. And then we're going to say, God, you're awesome. And all this time I was crying out to you, you really were answering. But he has heard me. He has answered my prayer. And if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. He can deal with it. He can help you. Just bring it to Him. Hallelujah. Well, I told you, it's a painful principle, but it's a liberating one. Let's, let's sing that one last time, and then I'll ask Lorraine to close us in prayer. Let's review. Awesome. God is awesome. Afflicted. You're going to go through it. Afflicted. But it'll, God, God's doing it. Why? Abundance. And answers. He wants to answer your prayer. So keep crying out to Him. Meditate on this verse, this chapter, all this week. Take Psalm 66. Read it seven more times before we see you again. Really let it get into you. Let's close with worship, and then Lorraine, would you close us in prayer? Come, see what God has done. See what God has done. For every daughter.